As members of ICMA, we pledge to lead our communities with integrity, to engage our residents in their local government, and to create an environment that fosters equity and inclusion throughout our organizations and our communities. Such leadership requires a strategic understanding of community culture, aspirations, and an effective staff who share our commitment to a strong and resilient community. In the foothills of the Rocky Mountains, there is such a community. Boulder, Colorado, known for its innovative culture, vast open space, and miles of biking and running paths. It's the happiest place in America, where a highly engaged community drives issues of global significance on the national stage to ensure Boulder remains a sustainable and resilient community for future generations. Boulder is a university town, home to federal laboratories, a tourist destination, an entrepreneurial hub, and a center for international companies. And it's a community full of people chasing dreams, overcoming challenges, and building a sense of community together. Boulder is also home to someone who understands the true calling of public service, the importance of local government service delivery, and leadership through strategy, planning, and facilitation. As Boulder's city manager, Jane Brodigan is guided by community engagement, equity, and inclusion to offer a voice to those most impacted by local government. She is a leader who faces tough issues with her community, who helps elected officials plan for today and develop long-term strategies that reflect community values and priorities, and the fiscal prudence to handle the unexpected. She's also a leader who uses her knowledge, from community planning to policy setting, to open communication, knowledge to model city values, and to inspire her team. From the start of her career as one of few women earning a law degree in 1976, to over three and a half decades of service to local government, culminating in her appointment as the first female manager for Boulder, she is now poised to lead our profession into the future. From the City of Boulder's leadership team, please welcome your new ICMA president, Jane Brodigam. Thank you so much. I'm a little scared. Okay. I grew up in the 1960s in a leafy suburb of Philadelphia. It was the middle of the 100th anniversary of the Gettysburg Address and a time when we looked forward to the bicentennial of the United States. And it was Philadelphia. There was music playing and people swaying. We celebrated America. On school and family trips, we went to Valley Forge and the Liberty Bell. My dad was an engineer who traveled internationally. So when visitors came from Great Britain or Japan, we marched them into town to the Independence Hall and the Franklin Institute. We were proud of our heritage, government by the people, government for the people, liberty and justice for all. Looking back, I see what a privileged life I led and that as a grade school student, my mid-20th century America largely avoided important discussions of injustices all around. There were shocking images on TV, but my world was beautiful and inspiring. I believed in those founding principles then, as I do now. And yet, like so much of what our world presents us, both then and now, there was a paradox that was and is hard to navigate. History tells the story of the powerful, but often ignores the stories of those who are underrepresented and the inequities that occurred along the way. As local government professionals and as a part of an organization that promotes principles of equity, how can we lift up the ideals of democracy, justice, and, and equality in our counties, cities, and villages across the globe yet see clearly and act decisively to address the shortcomings and injustices that still exist. One of the blessings of local government is that we have an up-close, some may even say an intimate view of the daily struggles and dreams that individual people have in their lives. And with that intimacy comes the responsibility to care deeply and the ability to affect positive change at a grassroots level to achieve the common good for all residents. 
In this last year, I had the good fortune to meet many ICMA members at regional conferences around the United States. They come from counties and cities, large and small. They are emerging leaders, mid-career professionals, and ancient wise ones. They are ICMA members or not, and what they share is the belief that we local government professionals are here to improve lives and revitalize the places we love for the common good. What I love about ICMA, the people in this room, and the colleagues we encounter in our state, regional, and international associations is that we recognize the ways in which our world is imperfect. And instead of being defeated by the daunting task of change, we welcome it. We share the value of public service. We share ideals and ethical imperatives. We are not afraid to say, I need help. How can I do this better? We promise one another this support, and we are there in times of trouble. ICMA backs up this promise with resources, webinars, but mostly with people, a network of affiliates and associates and staff members who have new ideas and practical advice. Together, we form a bond that affirms the worth of the service we give to our communities and the joy we experience in the giving. As leaders in our communities, it is our privilege and responsibility to speak out with courage to foster hope and optimism. In our world, hope is not optional. It is the inspiration for improving lives and driving innovation. But hope is only the beginning. It is the impetus for take action and act we must. Throughout this conference, we heard about communities, large and small, accomplishing significant change through partnerships and investments, and also, importantly, through listening and responding to the ideas of the very people who live a problem every day. It is this intimate view of our residents' daily lives that helps us achieve the, the common good as we strive to become better communities. Several years ago, during the time I had been scheduled to attend this very conference, a devastating flood scoured my community. As is true of so many disasters, the flood response lasted only a few days. But our recovery was five years in the making and at great cost. One of the silver linings of that disaster was our community's renewed focus on resilience. When we examined ourselves, we found that our vulnerability beyond the physical damage was the need for robust social connection among individuals within the community. We call it social resilience. I know that many of you and your communities have similarly experienced great loss, whether from hurricanes, floods, fires, earthquakes, or horribly man-made disasters. The damage is always devastating, and the cost in lives harmed or affected in negative ways is incalculable. What lifts us up in these times is the spirit of community coming together and the connections between people, helping each other, some of them strangers. As managers of communities, our best efforts must be directed toward fostering these individual connections, the people over the place. Across the world, people are in search of meaning and of belonging, of being seen as worthy and valuable. We have the power to provide meaning, to impact their lives, to demonstrate that what matters most are their hopes and dreams for a life of safety, security, peace, prosperity, accomplishment, and fulfillment. When we care deeply about the individuals, we achieve the communities that reflect our sh shared values and sense of belonging. What a humbling experience it is to stand before the many amazing public leaders in this room and across this organization as your representative, because you understand this work. In this room, I see people who have struggled through tragedy in their communities, who have raised the alarm about climate change, who have stood up for human rights, who have transformed places from despair to hope, who have led communities to times of truth and reconciliation, 
who have created cities in love with their residents, and those who have recited poetry to soften the blows in tough times. I owe my deepest gratitude to all of you, and of course, to my dear family, my partner Carl, who is dedicated and crazy enough to watch city council meetings every Tuesday night and who lifts me up when the going gets tough. My daughter Jessica, who transforms places for people as a city planner. My son Robert, who touches young lives as the principal of a charter school. I am eternally grateful to them for loving me, even when I come home late and gritchy on council nights, and for agreeing with me that we have the craziest jobs ever when that meeting actually involved three hours discussing the habits of prairie dogs. <laughs> None of us can do this work without a cloud of witnesses who surround us, who encourage us, who love us and lift us up. I thank them and all of you for the trust you have put in me. In the last year, as folks have started to know that I might actually be the president of ICMA, I have been asked, what will you focus on in your time as president? I don't know what they expect to hear, and I want the answer to be amazing. We all want to change the world, right? I have found the only answer I can give. It is a message and an exhortation. As persons involved in public service, we have the best jobs ever. We have the opportunity to impact people's lives by taking the time to really see them and their families. And by seeing them, their needs, and their dreams, we have the means to help people shape their own safer places, stronger communities, and better futures. Let's embrace that, and let's do it with goodwill and hope and kindness. What I have learned in my year as president-elect is that hope is alive in hearts across this country and across the globe. In each of our communities, people have hopes and dreams as true and high as mine and yours, and they look to us as leaders to help them accomplish these goals. We in this room, we are so lucky. We sit in the center of the places we call home. As city and county managers, as local government professionals, we have the insights to see our world in sharp relief. We have the power to act, and we are called to do so. We meet in this conference hall and at cocktail hours and in the music venues of this beautiful, alive city to encourage one another, to say to one another what must be said. You are doing it. You are making a positive difference. Together, we are changing the world.